Hi, my name is Rosalind, and this is my video response to the A7-2 discussing uh, for transit messages. I think bone conducting technology sending commercial messages on mass transit is crossing the line. I agree with the second article, Bus Writers and Invasive Advertising, paragraph 3, that it victimizes the bus writer. Uh, the technology is unavoidable, and I don't want to sound overdramatic, but it's almost like mind control, which is pretty scary. I think that it violates privacy, and there could possibly be some health risk involved. I can see how a retailer might view the technology as positive because it acts as a commercial stimuli. The textbook defines commercial cues on page 185, paragraph 5, as a message that is sponsored by a retailer or some other seller. I think that in the beginning phases, writers will find the technology fascinating, but routine writers may start to find it irritating and disturbing. Also, public transportation is not free, so I think that bone conducting technology would be frustrating for writers, especially those that pay for monthly passes. I um, personally wouldn't want someone in my head convincing me to buy products when I'm already forking out money to ride the bus or train. Consumers will accept this technology in the following areas because it does not focus primarily on advertisements or solicitations to an individual. If the technology played music, preferably classical, since the video mentioned that many tired bus riders rest their heads on windows, riders could feel more relaxed. It could be similar to Pandora with some advertising and commercials included in the service. Sometimes it's difficult to actually fall asleep on the bus because of the noise and people, but this technology could help riders eliminate background noise. The technology could also be utilized to announce bus stops that are coming up to alert riders that have fallen asleep while resting their head on the windows, helping reduce the amount of riders that miss their bus stop um, due to falling asleep. Bone conduction will not be successful as an ad medium in the U.S. because of um, Americans caring about their privacy and their rights. This technology does not give writers an option to not participate with the technology um, besides not putting their head on the window. But um, I think that retailers will gain a negative image from participating in this technology because consumers are going to feel like their privacy has been violated. Advertising is already taking over with commercials on TV and radio, uh, billboards, flyers, magazines. But as consumers, um, we have a choice with these advertising methods to turn off the TV, turn down the radio, or throw away a magazine. On a bus or train, there is no choice to opt out um, of this technology except for, again, not resting your head on the window, which is frustrating since you're paying for transportation. In the textbook on page 182, paragraph 3, it states, Retailers must strive to turn around some negative perceptions that now exist. I think that the bone conduction technology will create a negative perception of retailers because consumers will not want to feel tricked into buying something. Smellvertising will be successful as an ad medium on public transportation because of physical drive. In the textbook on page 185, um, paragraph 3, defines physical drive as a third type of stimulus. It occurs when one or more of a person's physical senses are affected. Hunger, thirst, cold, heat, pain, or fear could cause a physical drive. I think that if riders smell food, they will be more likely to get off the bus and go straight to what they previously smelled. Um, showing the success of smell advertising in the article Bus Riders and Invasive Advertising, paragraph one, it states, sales at Dunkin' Donut outlets near those bus stops increased 29% um, earlier this year. The article also states in paragraph two, we advertisees have developed fairly sophisticated methods of avoiding ads at sensory intakes. We tune out unpleasant sounds with headphones. We avert our eyes from unpleasant images. Scent, however, is harder to ignore. Although I think smell advertising is smart, especially from a retailer's perspective, there are still some risk, um, especially for writers with allergies. These types of advertising are predatory because they are aggressive and forceful. The writer participates with or without consent. Uh, both bone conduction technology and smell advertising are forced methods of advertising, leaving the writer with no choice but to participate. Um, then again, these types of advertising are not predatory because um, for the bone conduction technology, writers can choose not to sit next to a window or lean their head against the window, technically. Um, as for smell advertising, a fragrance is hard to control. There could be someone on the bus who wears a lot of perfume or someone who smells really bad. So, I mean, overall, smells are something that are difficult to control. Thank you.